Hey lovely souls, welcome to Terralyn. Today I have a past life reading for the collective. So the reason that I love past life readings is that they're not just fun ways to look into who we might have been. They're also great tools for discovering lessons we need to learn in this lifetime. And by figuring out who you were in your past life, you can discover what your purpose in this lifetime is. So if you've been intrigued to see who you were in a past life, definitely stay tuned to see what your message is. I wanna say if you're new to the channel, welcome. Welcome. Please subscribe. I would love to have you a part of this family. I post new videos like this every single week and I also post shorts daily. So make sure you turn on that bell notification so you don't miss my next post. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with others. If you want to purchase a personalized reading, I sell them on Etsy or you can message me on one of my social media platforms. Everything's going to be linked in the description box down below. And without further ado, let's learn about your past life. I want to give you a heads up that your past life was full of disappointment. It was not a very happy Happy one and before I dive into your message I want you to check in with yourself and make sure you're at a good place to hear that there's a lot of lessons for you to learn from this past life and the message is going to be beneficial for you but I don't want you to listen if you're not ready to hear it yet so you have the king of swords for your energy of who you were and you have the two of pentacles for your status so I feel like people didn't know about you I feel like you were very smart very analytical I feel like you were very logical, but there's also this energy that I'm getting with your other cards that you were very compassionate. And I feel like you were altruistic. You wanted to help other people. So I feel like you were known within your community, but I don't necessarily feel like you had a lot of power over your community. With the two of pentacles that your status came from someone else in your life where maybe there was a partnership, a team, a collaboration. So people knew about you, but it was more like this goal or this help or friend that you had in your life, this team that you were building that people knew you for. So you had status because of something that you were doing that people looked up to or they respected, but it wasn't personally you who held a lot of the power. I feel like you had a really big heart but you had a different way of like processing information and this allowed people to take advantage of you in this lifetime. Um, and I say that because you have the five of pentacles. And so with this five of pentacles, I feel like you were always trying to help people overcome their circumstance. I feel like you could have set up a charity um, or you were just being like generous with what you had and were basically taking like the shirt off your back to give to someone else. And it feels like your mission in life was to help people better themselves and provide pathways forward for other people. But I feel like that mission made you powerless or took away other opportunities for you. You might have made some enemies of people in this past life who didn't agree with what you were doing or how you were going about it. And it also feels like you had people who took your kindness to their advantage and they would manipulate you and it feels like there were people in life who were doing well who didn't need your help but convinced you that they did and so you being super generous would give to them and it's like you were taken away from yourself you were taken away from people who actually need it because people were trying to play you and it also feels like in this past life you ended up trusting the wrong person and when I was talking about your partnership before, this person might have betrayed you because it definitely feels like you have a lot of wounds when it comes to trust and relationships in general. So it feels like this person who was close to you, who was working on the same goal with you, basically stabbed you in the back. What I'm hearing from spirit is that they sold you out. And so you had this really generous goal. And instead of building it with you, this person jumped ship the moment that they could make more money in an easier way. It feels like this person started with good intentions, but greed got the better of them. And I feel like this was really difficult for you because that went against your moral code in that past life. And so it was so foreign to you that someone could just change because it doesn't feel like they were always that way. It feels like they truly did change. And so that made you question so much of everything around you because this person that you thought you knew completely changed into a different person and they did so in a way where you didn't even see it coming and that was really difficult for you to navigate and so with the nine of wands in your reading i feel like that pain created like a karmic wound that's followed you into this past life when it comes to trusting others when it comes to 
allowing people into your life, it feels like you have this sense of always waiting for the other shoe to drop. It feels like you're always waiting for someone to disappoint you. You're always waiting for them to let you down. You're always waiting for them to hurt you. And I feel like you've created a self-fulfilling prophecy in your life where you seek out people where deep down you don't trust them. You don't believe them. And you let them into your life so that when they hurt you, you use that as your proof. Like, see, I knew this was gonna happen. This is why I don't trust people. And so it creates this dynamic where you're proving your own point, but it's from a place of bias because you're not analyzing yourself and understanding why you're seeking those types of people out you keep falling for the same patterns. And so in order to break that cycle, it requires you to evaluate why you're chasing this person. And this doesn't have to just be romantically. This is in all areas of your life. When you're making bonds with people in your life, you need to ask yourself why you're drawn to them and evaluate if you're drawn to them because it's mutually beneficial or if you're drawn to them because right now things seem good but deep down you don't even fully trust them. Because if you're going into a situation already having your doubts about a person, chances are there's a reason for that. And so you really gotta dive deeper with yourself. And so your message in this lifetime is to find trustworthy people. Allow yourself to open up to people, but do so in a way where it's safe for you, do so in a way that's healthy for you, and break the cycle of chasing after people specifically to be disappointed. Stop giving chances to people who are undeserving of you giving them a chance. Because you did that in this past life. You did that constantly in this past life where you gave people the benefit of the doubt and it hurt you. And that's a wound that's carried with you into this lifetime, is that you are creating the self-fulfilling prophecy, but you also are trying to give everyone another chance. And it's like not everyone deserves multiple chances. Sometimes it's one and done. And so don't be afraid to set boundaries in this lifetime. I wanna talk about your unfinished business in this lifetime. It's the Knight of Cups. And I'm tying this in with the Six of Cups because with the Six of Cups, your generosity made you powerless. And it feels like you so badly wanted someone to come into your life and save you the way that you were trying to save others. But it feels like you were always helping people because you were like, one day it's gonna come back to me. Some of your motivations were good, yes, but some of your motivations were helping others thinking that it was going to make your life so much better. And I feel like your mindset was, if I keep doing good deeds, if I keep helping others, if I keep being generous, then eventually people are gonna help me. But instead, because you were not balanced with it, because you were going all in on other people and you weren't focused on yourself and making things better for yourself, it never worked out how you wanted it to. And it feels like with this Knight of Cups, you were waiting for this savior in your life to just be like, I see the good deeds you're doing and let me help you out. It's almost like a fairy tale where you have like Snow White or Cinderella where it's like they're good, they're focused on just being the best person that they can be and all of a sudden that is rewarded because they meet the prince and live happily ever after. It's like you wanted that fairy tale. But unfortunately, that fairy tale didn't happen and going to this Knight of Cups, the unfinished business in your lifetime, is that you've almost become hyper independent as a result of this past life because your generosity and your kindness was taken advantage of. You almost do the opposite in this lifetime where you're not going to help others or you're going to do so but only when you see fit. You're going to be the number one cheerleader for yourself and you don't need anyone else to save you or do anything for you because they're only going to let you down. They're not going to do it the right way. They're not going to do it your way. So you with this Knight of Cups energy have become your own savior in a way where you're blocking everyone else out. It's like you're not sharing your victories with other people because you're so afraid that they're going to take it from you. And so you created this isolation in your life. And the thing is the Knight of Cups is someone where he's like offering things to other people. He is a very generous energy, but it feels like you feel like the only way for you to get opportunities is for you to bust the door down yourself. It's like you don't think knocking is an option. You don't think there's anyone on the other side to open it for you. You don't think the door is unlocked. You think you have to barge in and be bold for yourself and protect yourself. And I feel like sometimes this creates conflict in your life where you write people off for the wrong reasons or you blow up at people for things that really wouldn't be that big of a deal if you were healing this wound. I think sometimes 
When people don't support you in the way that you feel you deserve to be supported, this wound opens up and you feel like they're attacking you when they're not. Everyone expresses things in different ways and someone could be proud of you and support you and love you but show it in a different way. And so because you have this finite way of how you show up for yourself, you're expecting everyone else to show up in the same way and that's not realistic. And then you use that as fuel to your fire to say, oh, they disappointed me. I don't need them. It's time to cut them out. And it feels like sometimes you rotate through the people in your life because it's hard for you to keep close relationships because you demand a lot of them while being hyper independent. It's like you tell yourself you don't need them. That's why it's easy for you to cut them off. But really you wouldn't be getting that upset with them if you found that validation inside yourself. You're getting upset with them because you are seeking external validation and you're not even admitting to yourself that you are. So that's another thing that you need to work on in this lifetime. There's a lot of healing that needs to be done in this lifetime because this past life was very disappointing for your soul energetically. With the Two of Wands, it has a Ouija board on it. And I feel like in this past life, you were warned about the people who were going to disappoint you, who was going to hurt you, who was gonna sabotage you and backstab you. And it's almost like you didn't believe this warning. You were like, no, that's not gonna happen. We're gonna be good. And so it feels like in this past life, there was this energy where you were intrigued by the occult or you had gotten messages from people you might have seeked out tarot readings or other types of readings in this past life. You didn't fully believe it, but you were open to it. You were receptive to it. And it feels like because what this person told you came true, all of a sudden you projected blame for the situation onto what this person predicted. It's almost as if you felt that your friend wouldn't have changed if you never got this tarot reading, if you never heard this and it wouldn't have been true. And it's like, that's not how it works, but that's what you thought. And it feels like in this lifetime, you're wary of the occult. It feels like you're afraid of it. I feel like even watching this video is something that's new for you or taking you out of your comfort zone. It feels like a lot of you just stumbled across this video. And it feels like there's a lot of fear when it comes to tarot and the occult. Ouija board specifically, mediumship is very scary for you. It feels like some of you actually do have psychic abilities that you have completely blocked and shut down because you're so afraid of developing them, because you're so afraid of hearing what you don't want to hear. And if you truly don't want to develop your psychic abilities, you don't have to. But if you do want to develop them, there's ways that you can do it where it doesn't have to be overwhelming for you. You can go at a pace that's best for you and you can do so in a way where you're not going to perceive messages of things that you don't want to hear. And so there's a lot of things you need to heal from this past life, but a message that your past self wants you to know now is that it's okay to be selfish. It's okay to have selfish desires for goals that you want to achieve and to fight for them and make them happen and to be passionate about what you're doing and not take no for an answer. Not like people tell you it's impossible that you can't do it. It's about finding the doors that are unlocked and going through them and forging your own path. It feels like you have a lot of ambition, but because things in this past life didn't pan out, you're afraid to go for it. And this is your past self telling you it's okay to go for things. It's okay to take a risk. It's okay to have goals. Just because you didn't achieve them before doesn't mean that you can't achieve them. You just need to have a different approach. You can't trust everyone, but you can trust some people. You're not going to be able to achieve what you want alone, but you're also not going to be able to achieve it by trusting everyone. There's a balance. And that's what the main thing is. You need to find balance in this lifetime so you could heal what happened in the past life, but not be overcorrected like you're doing right now in your life. You're overcorrecting and you're so far on the other side, you need to find a balance. And so with this Ace of Wands, it's like light your candle, light your path forward and go for what you want, but do so in a way where you are open to whatever path the road takes you down. Because in this past life, you had such a rigid view on how you were going to achieve success and that didn't pan out. But if you had been open to different things, you might've found a different avenue. So just be mindful is really what you need to do in this lifetime. So I hope this past life message resonated for you. Let me know in the comments down below if it did. And let me know in the comments below what video you would like to see next for me. If you want to purchase a personalized reading, I do sell them. You can check out my Etsy shop or you can message me on my other social media platforms. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification for more videos like this. I post new videos every single week and I post shorts daily. I can't wait to see you all in my next video. And until then, I hope you have a very happy cozy season. Bye.